Its name comes from an anonymous guy claiming to have Q-level security clearance within the Trump White House. The image was hard to miss. The letter Q. Q symbol on signs in the crowd. It represents QAnon, a fast-growing right-wing online community that pushes false conspiracy theories. People who believe in some conspiracy theories that are so broad and often bizarre, it's difficult to believe. Believe in the QAnon conspiracy theory. QAnon claims that a shadowy cabal within the U.S. government is at war with President Trump and that the president will soon purge the country of these enemies. Now emerging from a shadowy corner of the Internet into the mainstream. It is indeed time to drain the swamp, and we are going to drain the swamp. You know, Trump campaigned on draining the swamp, on getting rid of special interests. We are going to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. Donald Trump repeatedly promised to drain the swamp. To drain the swamp. So what does he need to do to drain that swamp and fight the establishment? We have begun to drain the swamp of government corruption. But others are cheering their exits, saying, well, the swamp is being drained. Many times I said we would drain the swamp, and that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're draining the swamp. The American people are living in a matrix. They don't understand the truth of how things are working in this country. From the election of 2020, when you get to decide. Now, we know what's going on here. Hillary Clinton was utterly destroyed by Donald Trump. The Democrats, the media mob, they never saw this coming. The deep state is going mainstream. Unelected deep state operatives who defy the voters to push their own secret agendas are truly a threat to democracy itself. The very fact is that if you, if you ask 100 people on the street, what kind of government is America supposed to be? 99% of them will tell you a democracy. America is supposed to be a democracy. But that's a lie. That's an illusion. The word democracy is not written into the Constitution at one time. It's not in the Bill of Rights. It's not in the Declaration of Independence. The Founding Fathers hated the idea of a democracy. They thought it was the worst form of government there is. And I agree with them. Because in a democracy, 51% of the people control 49% of the people. A few thoughts now on what we've been reporting here for months. The deep state. The deep state now working overtime, working to subvert President Trump and his entire administration. For believers, the deep state is a mysterious faction of opposition bureaucrats. In Trump's case, a shadowy cabal of Obama supporters entrenched in government, intent on bringing him down. If you want to call pushing back against that evidence of the deep state, go ahead. But I come back to my view, career professionals governed by the rule of law trying to do the right thing for the country. What concerns you? What keeps you up at night? My greatest concern that the most destabilizing force in the world today is the United States of America. And then the collapse happens. Now, they may pin that collapse on Trump. He may be the fall guy. They may use him as a symbol, say, wow, we allowed Trump to become get in power, and then the whole thing fell apart. Well, you know, we, we, we've been telling the people that follow us that, that you know, we're getting, we, we, I mean, we really turned bullish. When, when Trump got elected, we knew the gravy train was coming. And now we're going to complete the economic crisis that they interrupted in 2008. All right, this is pretty blunt. The president warning, you don't elect me, then it's going to be a market crash. That's simple. First of all, it's, it's kind of a risky thing to say, one, one way or the other, Gary B. But what do you make of what the president's saying, you know? Uh, everything you've been seeing happening with the economy and the markets and all these stock buybacks and these great earnings and all of that, all goes if I'm not real -like. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. How bad is it, Secretary Van Houten? We're broke. The country is broke. But blaming the deep state will only get him so far. 
Are you worried? Of course I'm worried. If you're part of the 49%, you're not free. America was founded as a constitutional republic. And in that constitutional republic that we have, 99% of the people can't take away the rights of 1%. You have your rights because you were born with them. You have God-given human rights that nobody can take away from you. The government, the majority, no matter who they are, I can't take away your rights. And that's what, that's, that's what our founding fathers gave us. But the psychological operations that they, they do to us, they make us believe that we're a democracy and that majority rules. Those entrenched Democrats, deep state people, who tried to swing the election to Hillary. And when that failed, they set about undermining Donald Trump, the president they really hate. The big wealthy business interests that control things and make all the important decisions. Forget the politicians. Politicians are put there to give you the idea that you have freedom of choice. You don't. You have no choice. You have owners. They own you. Is there a power structure in place in Washington that operates like a shadow government, what some refer to as the deep state? Do you think that's a scenario that keeping the president on this war footing against the deep state is absolutely essential to his political brand? Or is that too conspiratorial, even for a skeptic? You see? And they want you to believe that. Because then they tell you this poll says this many want this and this many want that and this many want this and it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Well, Hitler was elected. Hitler was elected. Hitler did everything legally. And in a re constitutional republic, a minority is, pro is protected against a majority. Wasn't it Benjamin Franklin, a paraphrase, that said democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner? Exactly. And then he also said in a republic, the sheep would have a gun <laughs> 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 to protect himself. It's not so simple and so easy as just holding on to your guns and getting your bug out bag. Do you think they didn't have a plan for all that? I already told you that the whole gun thing, they want you to have the guns. If they want to ban guns, they could have done a long time ago. They don't want to ban guns. They want you to have your guns. And they want you to believe that the guns are going to protect you. That's what they want you to believe, and you believe it. I'm all for the Second Amendment, but that, uh, that ship sailed too. Saving America sailed 20 years ago, and the gun issue sailed a long time ago too because the technology advanced for them, and it did not advance for us. We're still holding on to our AR-15s and our Colt 45s and our shotguns, thinking that's going to really stand a chance to protect us and defend the Union. You are dreaming. You're in fantasy land. We don't have the technology. They do. What they got is 100 years ahead of what you got. 100 years ahead of your guns, technology. You know, and that's, that's, that's the truth. America's not a democracy, but you ask the most intelligent people what form of government America's supposed to be, they'll say democracy. Because that's, that's what they've been brainwashed. They've been psyoped into believing that. They believe that we're in Iraq. They believe we're in Iraq to promote democracy. The word democracy, you hear George Bush saying democracy means freedom. No, democracy equals new world order. Democracy equals slavery. The word democracy is not synonymous with freedom. It's the opposite of freedom. Democracy is the worst form of government you can have because it's majority rule. And the government can tell you exactly what they want to tell you to do. These are smart people. They realized the whole Bush crap isn't going to work anymore. Bush was all about jingoism. Rah, 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 America's the policeman of the world. We're going to go get, them in, get the bad guys in the Middle East. That worked, but it doesn't work anymore because people have wised up and they're tired of the crap and the false flags and the wars. So if they got Trump in there and he's got a little street cred and he's a little bit anti-war and he rebuffed bolting on the war with Iran, now it looks like, hmm, maybe Trump's the guy we can trust on this. And then he, he kicked Bolton out. So we don't really know for sure. My hope is Trump has a plan, a trick up his sleeve, and he's playing these idiots over in Israel like a fiddle. There was a brazen plot to clear Hillary Clinton and to frame Donald Trump if he 
became president. And now we're seeing that plot unravel. Oh, and we are just at the beginning of an I asked Cheryl Ackerson today. She said we have unveiled less than 2% correct of the real corruption. So you got to ask yourself, why is QAnon saying all this stuff? And we know it's not happening. QAnon probably has access to information. It's more than just what they call a LARP. There's something to it. But it's just talk. Nothing's happening. They just want you to believe that something's happening. They want you to believe the indictments are coming. They want you to believe it's just right around the corner, tick tock, tick tock. But nothing is fundamentally changing. I hope it's not ending. We're starting. We're starting to unravel and peel back this onion. And God bless these FBI agents who want to come forward. We were told that everybody in the FBI just loved James Comey. Well, it appears that there's some that want to see him indicted. And I hope that happens. All right. The fundamental things that need to happen haven't happened. And a lot of really bad things have happened. Particularly some of this stuff he's signing with respect to the Noahide laws and the anti-Semitism stuff. That's really bad. I don't see any resistance from Trump on that. He's either a complete moron or he's got some game plan to play him. I don't see it happen. I don't see it. What's he doing to stop any of this? Nothing. Whether he's conscious with all this or he is just being played himself. Maybe he's a puppet. Maybe he's compromised. Maybe they give him a script and say, well, go out and talk about that and talk about this and do that. We don't really know. you got to search your gut and the Holy Spirit on that one. Well, this president ran on draining the swamp. That was one of the main tenets of our campaign was to change Washington. And he's truly an outsider. And if I believe his article said there are nearly 80,000 fewer federal employees today than there were when President Trump came in office 15 months ago. That is a, an unbelievable but, you thing. Know, they 80, say it's 000. just because they haven't gotten around to filling the spots, but you're saying no, no, they no, have no, no. no intention These of filling those leaving. spots. That's right. These people are leaving. They're fleeing the ship because it's not as attractive as it once was, and the economy is much better. But this president is focused on the deconstruction of the administrative state. That's what we talked about during the campaign, and that's what he's doing today. But you need to open your eyes and you look around and you say, wait a minute, things aren't fundamentally changing in a way that needs to happen to save the country. And I just told you what it was, martial law, shut down the agencies, arrest all of them, get them in Gitmo, get them in the military bases, try them for treason. You have to declare martial law. You've got to get troops on the streets in Washington, D.C. to clean out the swamp, get the Constitution back in play. You've got to undo all the legislation from Congress and Obama and Bush. You've got to completely undo it. Patriot Act, all of it. Trump hadn't done any of that. You've got to totally cut ties with Israel, send all the dual citizens back to Israel, cut all the funding, and you got to open the 9-11 investigation. you got to ban 5G. I mean, these are all the things that need to happen, and they haven't happened. And you got to get the Clintons indicted and arrested. None of it's happened. It's just been talk on Twitter. Good talk, but just talk. You're being played. You're being played for fools. That's why I said you can't save America. That's the things that need to happen to save America haven't happened. It's over. First, it's war. Public enemy number one, also known as the deep state, the mainstream media, the intelligence community, the establishment, and of course, globalists and their mission to destroy President Trump at all costs now. What this tells me is that this is part of what we like to call the deep state, career bureaucrats or government officials who are now in positions of power that are using their power pejoratively against American citizens. And the deep state's involvement in it all. You're down there in D.C. Is there a yeah. deep state trying to derail President Trump? Well, I think it's very clear, Liz, that whose sole mission, it seems, is to bring the president down. But the deep state wouldn't allow that to occur. And Trump's moving the ball forward for Israel, and he's moving the ball forward on 5G. 5G alone ought to be enough to tell you things are not what they seem. Embattled with the Democrats, there seems to be a power struggle. I mean, that could be real. Is it theater? Is it real? Are Trump and Hillary friends? Are they not friends? Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. 
Trump's president. He hadn't done what's necessary to save the country. It's been too much talk, too much pro-Israel, too much window dressing. Too much window dressing, and it won't matter in the end. He didn't make enough fundamental changes to turn the country around. It's over. And for those of you that still believe in the political system, do you recall that Donald Trump, the guy standing right there in this particular debate and several others, kept talking about the 33,000 emails and how he was going to send Hillary to jail. He was going to get a special prosecutor and attorney generals and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And then right after he is selected to be the president of the Corporation of the United States of America, this happens. Very honored, very, very honored when I heard that President Bill Clinton and Secretary Hillary Clinton was coming today. And I think it's appropriate to say, and I'd like you to stand up. I'd like you to stand up. And honestly, there's nothing more I can say because I have a lot of respect for those two people. So thank you all for being here. So do you see what I'm saying? It's complete and total nonsense. Complete and total nonsense. Look at these creepy, heavily make hair all puffed up, soulless, scum, elitists, clapping and quacking and praising each other. Say anything to get elected. Say what the people want to hear. And as soon as they become whatever they're trying to become, they stick to the they stick to the the script. And I'm going to show you exactly why. And this is going to get me in trouble, but this is something that you need to see. I've shown this before. I'm going to show it again. And I'll leave links in the comment section so you can see it for yourself. Because it's important. This is who Trump is, and this is who he serves. I've shown you this when he got elected, selected, and I'm going to remind you. I've shown you this list before, and many other YouTube channels have shown you videos that cover this exclusively. But who is Michael Cohen? The Trump Organization, Executive Vice President and Special Counsel, and... Well, that's probably just one, right? Well, let's look at Gil Deezer. President Trump, Deezer Development, Michael Deezer. You seeing a theme here? Because it's going to keep going. Alan Fishman, his largest lender. Alan Garten, Executive Vice President and General Counsel, the Trump Organization. Michael Glasner. Are you catching on here? So do the moves that he make that Trump's been making make sense to you now? This is a complete and total 100% takeover of everything that we've ever known and loved. Whether we knew what it was or wasn't, it's going to become painfully obvious what everything is going to become. The new world order. The new world order is these people, just like it's always been since the days they nailed Yahushua to a cross. Do you see what I'm saying? You can argue it. You can deny it. You can hold on to hope as much as you want. But at some point, you've got to open your eyes and understand exactly what it is that's going on in our lifetime. We are the generation. I can't stress it enough. Do you think it's a complete and total coincidence that everyone's suddenly getting stifled and silenced on YouTube? A channel with 340,000 subscribers, and I'm lucky if a video gets 10,000 views. There's a reason for that. So these awards are given to me by the Jewish community for different things. And this is the Tree of Life, which is a very big award in terms of uh, everything that I stand for. It means so much to me. And a lot of times I'll have friends of mine come in. Everything that I stand for. In terms of uh, everything that I stand for. Everything that I stand for. It means everything that I stand for. Which is a very big award in terms of uh, everything that I stand for. It means so much to me. And a lot of times I'll have friends of mine come in. 
Jewish and they will see the tree of life and they'll say, wow, what a great thing. Likewise, right over here, this is the Shalom Humanitarian Award and that was presented to me also. And these are different awards I've had over the years uh, for different things I've done. This is the tree of life, which is a very big award. No, notice as he says the tree of life, look at the symbol he makes with his hand. I find that interesting. The MAGA OK symbol. It's absolutely amazing that people would just complete, com completely and totally deny or ignore this when it's completely in their face. When does a president of any country sign orders to prevent their own citizens from talking or thinking a certain way about another country? And yet that's all we're seeing from this guy. Because that's who he is. He's a puppet for Israel, just like I told you the day before and the day after he was selected president. People need to wake up because this is accelerating way faster than we ever thought. Any given moment, we could wake up and be unable to communicate, or worse, because this is moving fast. A president of a country making it a huge issue for people in colleges or institutions in his own country, unable to think freely. This is insane. This is totally insane, but here it is. This is them externalizing the hierarchy. They want you to know who's in charge and you need to wake up and you need to wake up soon because it's been right in front of your face the entire time. It's just whether you want to believe it or not. I tell you all the time, there's a reason they never change the $1 bill there's the great seal right there. You see it? You see it? You see it? But they don't just give it to you one time. It's on there more than once. I mean, of course, it's a complete and total coincidence that if you draw a Star of David inside the great seal, it clearly spells out the word Masons. Exactly. Do you see what I'm saying? This is who these people serve. They say one thing, to keep the sheep at bay, and then they continue to move forward. And that's exactly what they're doing.